cap flags, shirt flags, short flags, shoe flags. You've got flags flying out from every house, flags flying out from every building. It's just flags everywhere. What is up expat fam? It is Mateo from the Global Expats and today I'm talking all about culture shock in America as a South African. What it was like my first time visiting the United States. So my first introduction to the US is that a lot of the things feel just like the movies or just like TV. When I first got to the land of the free and home of the second chances, I was petrified. Not petrified for being in a new country and that, but petrified because it was like landing into one of the episodes of border security. When you get to the lines for passport control, none of those border security agents are smiling. When I got into a car from the Chicago airport and drove to Chicago, everything looked just as though it did in the movies where I'd watched it before and I was like, oh damn, it's like I'm part of the set now, I'm on set and they're just recording everything around them. I'll draw my attention to the Chicago firehouses. Guys, it was like I was on an episode of Chicago Fire, like I was in it. I saw more fire engines there in the time that I was in Chicago than I've seen in my entire life in South Africa. You stand outside the firehouse, everything opens, these cars rush out, they actually go and stop the building from burning down. Whereas here they might just arrive an hour or two late and without any form of water or anti-fire material. If you ask any American that I've spoken to, they'll tell you that at some point or another, I've had a discussion with them about their flags. Why on God's great green earth are there so many flags in the United States? And it's not just like one size fits all. Like you get the little flags, you get the medium flags, the big flags, cap flags, shirt flags, short flags, shoe flags. You've got flags flying out from every house, flags flying out from every building. One's on bridges, one's on top of trucks, one's Empire State Building, I don't know, there's just flags everywhere. The next thing that was truly shocking slash impressive was the amount of variety. There are so many options available for everything, especially in supermarkets and online. You spend forever looking at the different brands, just trying to figure out which one you should get. It's a complete waste of time. Once when I was shopping at Jewel Osco, in the heart of Chicago and Boys Town, I trump you not. I spent at least an hour in one aisle, one aisle in the supermarket, just trying to figure out what packet I need for my crock pot in order to cook my Italian beef roll. I was stressed at the end of it, but there are positives to this, I guess. There is a niche for everything, or a niche apparently, that's how you say it in America. But to be fair, when you're in the bigger cities and that, it's actually pretty enjoyable because when you want something or need something, not only do you have a range of things to choose from, but that thing can be there either today or tomorrow. We don't get that in South Africa. That would be pretty cool though. That's some first world country stuff. Next up is the biggest rash of them all. This is all things money related. Why? Why on earth is there a $1 bill? And why are all the notes the same color? Let's start off with that $1 situation. Just make it a coin. Why do you have to be different? Every other country has a coin. Why do I want to carry around hundreds of little $1 notes? It doesn't make any sense. But when it comes to them being the same color, this is even more mind blowing than the $1 bill. When you're looking into your wallet and you see a whole bunch of green paper, you can pull out the one and you can pull out the 100 and they look exactly the same. You can accidentally give away a $100 bill instead of the $1 bill. This just, this just sets up a whole range of problems and don't even get me started on those coins. Penny, nickel, dime and quarter. First up, this isn't 17th century France. I don't know where these words are coming from. There probably is a logical reason. So if you know what it is, tell me in the comments below. But for real, why can't you just call it a one, a five, a 10, and the 25 is a bit weird. I mean, what am I going to do with a quarter? Just make it a 20 cents like every other country. And one of the biggest things I have a problem with, credit cards and debt. Why is debt normalized? Why is that something that everybody just seems to have and they're totally okay with it? And why can you get a credit card so easily? When I first flew to LA from Chicago, before getting off the plane, they were offering Southwest credit cards at the front of the plane. All I had to do was go and fill out some form and bam, I have a credit card. And another rant about money that I used to have with all my American friends was the tax. Tax is not included on the price tag. What you see 
is not what you pay. Just include the tax on the price tag. And I understand that each area has a different tax, but you know what area your shop is in, unless it's gonna magically get up and move, you know exactly what the tax is going to be for your area. And one last thing to do with money is when you're at a restaurant and that, how the Americans just give their credit card to the server and the server just vanishes with it. I cannot name one time in my life where any family member, friend, or I have given my card to a server and they've taken it out of my sight. Maybe we have a real trust issue, but we don't do that here. That's how fraud happens. That's how they steal your details, son. The first night I got to Chicago, we went to Giordano's Pizza, and after having an awesome meal, Michelle put her credit card inside the, what's that thing, the book that they bring? And the dude just disappeared with it. And I was freaking out. I was freaking out. I was like, why did you give, just give this guy your card? Like he's gonna go and take it away and do something with it. Tell him to bring it back, bring the machine to us. And then apparently I realized that it's not normal for machines to come to the table, the little paying machine. But in South Africa, that's all we do. They bring the machine to your table. In the States, it's a different story. They swipe your card and then it gets charged later on once they add on the tip and whatever else they wanted to add on. But yeah, something that was very weird to me. Another strange thing to me was that Americans celebrate every occasion. And the supermarkets prepare for each occasion and stock up for the next one as soon as the previous one is done. So when Valentine's Day is done, they stock up for Easter. When Easter is done, they stock up for MLK Day or 4th of July. But you know what I mean. And after years of wondering why Americans are so loud, I finally found the answer. Okay, before I tell you what it is, let me tell you that I come from an Italian family and when we do have big family functions and that, we can also get really loud, but it's more of an argumentative loud and everybody's trying to push their point onto somebody else. But this is not the case of the American conversation. The reason Americans can get so loud is because when they're in conversation, they try and compete for the conversation. And by this, I mean when one person's talking and the next one wants to say something, the next one will start to talk louder. And then the third one will start to talk as well. But then the first one's now being overtalked by two people. So then she has to, or he has to talk louder. And the second one tries to compete with that conversation. The third, and eventually it's just a loud bubble of everybody starting to shout at each other because they're trying to get each other to hear things. And that's where the chaos begins. The next surprise I got was their food portions. Their food portions can be insane. Like when I'm talking about like portions, I'm talking about it's two for one. To be fair, this can sometimes be really awesome because we can order one meal and Michelle and I can share it and both be full. But other than that, you usually get upset at the price because something will probably be really expensive. But at least you know when you get it, you'll probably have half for dinner or for lunch the next day. The variety of international foods is absolutely insane. If you want to get something from another country, their type of food, you can literally Google it and it'll be something down the road where you can buy that food. When my best friend Greg asked Michelle what was her favorite American food, her response was Korean barbecue. The thing that I struggled with was the price of booze. Man, was it expensive. In pubs and restaurants anyway. I once asked for a whiskey shot and it was $12. Well, I went without a whiskey shot. But another cool thing I found in the States is that you can buy something called a handle, which is a one and a half liter bottle of booze. Not the normal 750 ml, but double that. You can buy this big handle of liquor and it's a lot cheaper. My last point on alcohol is a personal opinion and that is that Bud Light tastes like watered down pee. It is one of the worst beers I've ever tasted, if it even has a flavor. Another thing I found super strange was being asked for ID everywhere. This doesn't matter how old you look or where you're buying your beer from, they will ask you for ID. I once got denied a beer at Disneyland because I wasn't carrying my passport. One day I was with Michelle at a supermarket and we were going to buy a case of beer. And when we got to the register, the till, we went through, the lady asked Michelle for ID, she showed her ID and then looked at me and said, and where's your ID? And so I looked very confused because I'm like, I'm not the one buying the booze. Like, but okay, I'll show you my ID. And I gave them my South African driver's license and they refused to accept it. And then they refused to let Michelle even buy this case of beer. It's mind blowing. Next up is television. I'll start off by saying that once I scanned through every single 
TV channel on their decoder, their like TV banquet, looking for an international news channel. And I can positively tell you that the international news channel in their country does not exist. They only cover America and their news is only American. The advertisements, the ads change depending on the state you're in, which was, I mean, it's understandable because it's such a big country, but like it is weird. You get like personalized ads for each area, which we don't get here. We just get national TV. But the biggest shocker was how many ads there were for different types of medicines and for lawyers. Medical ads ranging from basic allergy pills to life-changing remedies that they just discovered that's an all-in-one pill that'll clear all your problems in one go. And the lawyers ads were actually the most shocking. Lawyers ads that state that you could be eligible for recompensation for a whole variety of reasons. If I remember correctly the craziest one I saw was if you worked on an aircraft carrier and you had a certain type of earplug that was built between this year and that year it may have been defective and you are eligible to get ear damage recompensation i mean crazy stuff how do you how do you even prove that that's what it's from oh ooh, and you get to sue everybody for anything that's we thought was just like also like a myth overseas but that's like for real somebody does something to you touches you bumps your car anything you sue like you can get money from somebody you go for it you sue that person karen you sue her because at the end of the day you got to be paying them debts them debts you know one way or another talking about laws there are different laws in different states which again is understandable since it's such a big country but sometimes it's also a bit confusing such as in chicago we couldn't take your booze in the car yet you could ride a motorcycle without a helmet on and it's like one of the three states where you can just ride a motorcycle and don't worry about your head i can drink a beer on the streets in vegas yet i can't even buy a beer at downtown disney talking about different systems the imperial system this is not really a shock it's just nonsensical stop confusing the people change over to metric make things become one ten hundred thousand Stop making quarter inches and ounces, but then there's fluid ounces and pounds. Like, just, just, just embrace the rest of the world. Be part of the rest of the world. Come, let's all get together in unity, guys. No more imperial system. Switch over to the metric. Another weird one that I came across that freaked me out every time was the gap below, above, and between the toilet stalls. When I'm talking about gap, I'm talking about like a good visual gap where like, peeping Tom can actually see you sitting on the toilet. Next up is the diversity. Coming from our rainbow nation that is South Africa, the diversity in the United States even impressed me. Everything from the people to the culture to the transport to the foods to the drinks, it all changes depending on where you are in the country. The big cities are not just American. I mean these big cities have little Italy, they have Chinatown, they have different areas that have different groups of people, different nationalities. Being in San Diego, it had a more Mexican, Spanish type of influence with all the foods and that changing. Miami had more of a Cuban influence. And then Chicago had its own different type of vibe. They have deep dish pizza, which I actually loved. And don't come with that, oh, Italians are like thin pizza. I love that deep dish. That deep dish made my day. They had something I'd never seen before, like heated train and bus stops where you press the button and the heat came out the top. I mean, that's a genius invention for those freezing cold months. In the winter, you can put your booze outside on the balcony or the veranda and it actually gets colder than being in the fridge, which I've never experienced before. But then again, it was cold. So, so cold. But then in the summer months, it was humid, extremely humid. LA, it's, it's a huge city and it, it's just the sheer size of it is crazy. The amount of cars and traffic that they have is overwhelming. You can spend hours in the car trying to get somewhere that's just down the road. They have so many muscle cars and trucks and everything's just so big and <laughs> unnecessary. There's a whole bunch of druggies in Venice. There's barely any public transport. Jack in the box is better than in and out Just kidding. Carl's Jr. chicken tenders changed my life. The Hollywood Walk of Fame is actually a hole that smells a lot like pee. And the bushes and greenery in Los Angeles is all one life sucked green from all the smog. And another stereotype for all these places is that Americans can be very ignorant. 
I mean, that's still very debatable. I came across a few educated, knowledgeful ones, but then some not so much, such as I once got asked where I came from. So I said, South Africa. And that person responded by saying, oh, which country in South Africa? And sadly, I probably know more about America than most Americans. So if that doesn't say it, mm. However, my final take from where I was actually in the United States, everything was extremely efficient and clean, which is two things that I'm not used to. Things actually work, which was a blessing. I mean, if you needed to get something done, odds are you could probably get it done, which is another hard thing to understand why that's a problem. But if you've been to South Africa, you'll just know that that's a problem. They also advanced that most things can be done online, such as renewing your driver's license. I mean, that's a... It's a distant dream of ours here in South Africa. However, there was one last thing that freaked me out. It's a bit of a weird thing. But when we were living on the third floor of our apartment, we had these massive windows. Like easily I could climb out of them. And it used to freak me out because in South Africa, we're so used to having like burglar guards whereby every window has got bars on them that like I constantly worry that I'm gonna wake up and some dude's trying to climb through my window, even though it's on the third story and like in its own alleyway that has a locked gate and stuff. But I mean, that's just stuff, I guess, that is the difference between South Africa and the United States. And if you took any of this negatively, please don't. I love my time in the US and I can't wait to visit again. If you agree or disagree with any of my points, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I'll catch you later, friends.